Hey, everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, and we are talking about marriage in the middle. And we are going to dive into mindset and how critical it is for improving your experience in your marriage, communication, and how we start before you ever say another word to each other. And we're going to talk about the relationship that you have with your own emotions that drives how you respond to everything. So welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 ditch diets and lose weight for the last time. So you think you'll just go on a diet and lose all the weight and then figure it out from there. Um, how is that working out for you? I know from experience, people come to me with that concept and it doesn't work. You have to be able to lose the weight, how you're going to keep it off. So I can help you end the diet cycle, teach you how to lose weight, and you will learn exactly how to maintain that new body of yours. I am here waiting for you to say yes to you. So you get to make the next move. Book your discovery call now at shapeitupfitness.com slash call, and let's get started getting the results that you actually want. So let's dive into today's topic, marriage in the middle. So my special guest today is a life and marriage coach who helps couples develop the mindset and skills to create happy marriages. She received her doctorate from John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health and focuses her research on communication and intimate partnerships. She is the author of Voices in Your Ear, New Conversations to Transform Your Mind and Renew Your Marriage, and is the founder of Relatable Coaching Practice that provides a virtual coaching to couples seeking a combination of Christian faith guidance and transformational coaching tools. So welcome, Dr. Siobhan Parat to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Nicole. I'm happy to be here. I am so glad you are here today. So tell everyone a little bit about how you got started in your business and a little bit of background on you. Yeah. So it is such an interesting story. The business started in the summer of 2014. I was actually on maternity leave. I was working at an organization doing a lot of healthy relationship curriculum. It was what I studied in school, exactly what I went into for my career. And I just had a moment where I was like, I don't think I want to go back after maternity leave. And some of your listeners can probably relate to that. And I so- can relate to that. <laughs> literally, I was watching an episode of Oprah Super Soul Sunday, Mm -hmm. and she had this author, Stephen Pressfield on, and he was talking about this idea of when there's something you want to do when you've been called to like a higher purpose, there are so many obstacles in your way that keep you from doing that self-imposed obstacles. And it was really in that moment that I was like thinking about all the things I had been telling myself about why I couldn't have my own business, why I couldn't create the career that looked exactly how I wanted it to look. And I just decided to give all of that up. And I sat down and I mapped out like all the things I love to do, which was coaching, which I didn't even know was coaching at the time, Um, writing, just like helping people get what they want in life. And so decided that that's what I was going to do the following um, January. My husband and I were like, hey, wouldn't it be fun to just do a couples event? And we did that. And then a friend invited me to speak at a group that she was leading on Facebook and sort of the rest is history. I just like fell into it creating what I wanted, helping people, talking about the things that I love to talk about, which are all things relationships and started signing clients. And now I have like a booming (laughs) coaching practice. Yeah. The rest is history. So is your husband a coach as well or he's not, but we, (laughs) you know, it's so funny because we got married like in our mid thirties. And so we were really intentional about laying a foundation of having some really key healthy practices in our relationship. And so we were really conscious of like, oh, we're doing a lot of things together that our friends aren't doing. We're having conversations that our friends aren't having. And so we were like, wouldn't it be fun to just like start talking about the things that 
we learn and that are working for us and do that like in a date night. So in the career that I had before, I was very like familiar with doing training events, very interactive, fun events. And so I was like, let's just do it this way. And um, it was both entertaining and fun as well as really educational and really helped to connect um, the couples that attended. So we had a great time with it. That's awesome. Now, do you still do a couple retreats or is that well, listen, like, like Corona, <laughs> right? Oh, like yeah, yeah. I, it's so funny because <laughs> I had an event the weekend before everything shut down, literally mm. the last thing. And, um, so, you know, I'm, it's still definitely in the back of my head. I've been doing, um, last year I did a virtual event, a virtual two day event for couples. So, you know, I'm, I'm finding ways of getting the fun and engagement out there, uh, however we can in a way that's super safe for everybody. Yeah. Well, hopefully at the time of this recording, COVID is, seems to be calming down a little bit. So hopefully yeah. it'll be. Fingers crossed. It keeps yes. <laughs> For sure. (laughs) So let's dive into the topic, um, marriage in the middle. So I will let you take over from there. Tell me all about it. Yeah. So marriage in the middle, it's so interesting as I thought about where many of your listeners might be, not only in their marriage, but just in life, right? Where there's this idea of like, you're probably in the middle of parenting. I know for me, we are. And they're sort of like, they're not babies. They're like knowing how to do things, but there's still a huge role that you're playing. People may be in the middle of their weight loss journey where either they're really committed to starting and have seen some progress and are, you know, working toward that finish line. They may be in the middle of a career transition or re-evaluation and same with marriage, right? As I thought about it, Many of your listeners are probably not necessarily newlyweds where it's like that fun and excitement Mm -hmm. and they're not in the retirement age, maybe where it's sort of like they're relaxing and not having a lot of demands for their time, but they're right in the middle where it's there It may be coasting may not be as connected as they want, or they may be arguing about things that in hindsight seem really insignificant. And so I really just wanted to sort of come and talk about that middle zone of where it might not be what it used to be. Mm-hmm. And it's not yet what you want it to be, where you're just sort of like in that middle, a little bit discontent, a little bit distant, a little bit like eh, mm-hmm. annoyed with each other um, and really giving you some strategies and ways to think about this phase and this period to sort of put you in a better place where you are feeling fulfilled and content and really sort of grounded in this being the right fit for you. Yeah. And I think too, people, cause I'm, I'm 48 and a half and <laughs> like there, you also have the other end of like your parents, you know, a lot of people my age, their parents um, are getting older. My parents are in their eighties and, you know, granted, my parents are pretty self-sufficient, but a lot of 80 year old people are not. So they're kind of, what's that called? That sandwich generation? Sandwich, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause I have teenagers granted they are a lot less hands-on, you know, like, I don't know how old your kids are, but like, you know, there's no potty training. <laughs> My like kids that. are young. <laughs> we have, we have <laughs> bigger issues as to like, what party are you going to, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, it, it's interesting being in that phase. I also got married at 30. So um, I was a later uh, well considered, I guess later, um, marriage as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm there. I mean, 18 years in, so yeah. So tell us about, um, the mindset part. Yeah. So I think the mindset part is being where you are and finding the good there. So no matter what feels maybe off or not as desirable in your marriage, there's still something and many things oftentimes that is working well. And typically what I find when I talk with people who are really struggling and wanting help, it is this over-focus on what's going wrong of all the things that are not what they want it to be. And the first place that you have to start creating better is from 
finding what's already working, right? It's literally the difference between trying to build a house on a gaping hole versus creating some level ground and building from there. And I'm sure you teach this also with weight loss because I'm say, yeah. in the middle of my own weight <laughs> loss journey too. And that has been a lot of just like loving and appreciating my body and what it's capable of right now and like loving on it rather than trying to lose weight from self-loathing. And so it's literally the same thing when it comes to creating a better experience in your marriage where you have to start looking at like, well, what is working here? And I think sometimes I did a podcast episode myself on this concept of, I get a lot of complaints of people that feel like they're living like roommates. And that is a mindset in some ways, because when you think about what marriage is, it's like, you are roommates, right? Like, why does that have to be a bad thing? It's like, you take care of your home, you take care of the logistics together, everything gets done that needs to get done. You may be sleeping in the same bed, you might not be cuddled up together, but being roommates is a part of marriage. And so if you could see that as that and find what's working, even about where you are, then adding the deeper connection or the more engaged conversation or some of that affection and excitement and passion back is just so much easier. And so I think the biggest mindset shift that I would offer to anyone is to get out of the habit of focusing only on what's not there and focusing only on what's not working and start creating a list and start looking for where is this working? And then after that, it's really being clear about what you want, right? I talk again to so many people and it's like, what do you want your marriage to be about? They're like, well, I just want to spend more time together. I want us to talk more. What does that look like? Right? Like just again with weight loss, it's like, I want to lose weight. I'm sure you teach your clients. What is the number, right? You've got to have an actual goal, right? (laughs) We do have goals, but I actually, um, I, so you know, my tagline is I help women lose weight for the last time, right? I don't like that. I have to use the word weight, but that is what women are searching for. Yeah. But honestly, I don't really like the scale in the sense of like, you're measuring against really your gravitational pull on this earth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I yeah. like to get my clients yeah. to the space of like, how do you feel on your body? Which is exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. But also yeah. to what you're saying about, um, you know, I think, and I'm sure guys do this too, but like as women, we tend to want to get together and talk about all the horrible things that are going on. And it's funny because I just coached a client on this the other day because they like to get together with their friends and complain. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you're creating that like tornado drama constantly every time you recreate that and it's same thing with weight loss is you know when people come to me it's like I'll ask them where they are and they'll list all the things right that's wrong and then I'll say what do you what do you want to see happen and they'll go back to what's wrong wrong yes (laughs) yeah yes like we got to focus on because they're not yeah our brains aren't trained to think specifically like when when you're not where you want to be right when you're in this middle zone of like it's not what I want from before. It's not what it's going to be in the future. It is really like this vague idea that people come with of like, well, I don't know. I just don't want it to be like this. this so yeah. <laughs> the specificity is really important. And I, I love that you teach them like, what does it feel like? And so when I take my clients through the exercise of identifying what their ideal marriage is, we start there. Like, what do you want this marriage to be about? How do you want to feel? What do you want the energy and sort of the culture to be in this marriage? And then we work on the very tangible sort of like, you know, identifiable ways of making sure that we're creating that. Yeah. I love that. Cause again, it's the same thing with weight loss. It's like, you can beat yourself up with a workout and eat like a rabbit, but if your mindset is in the wrong space now, granted, I don't recommend beating yourself up or eating like a rabbit, but, um, (laughs) If your mindset, you can do the same exact activities, but yeah. if you have a mind shift, it's, it's a whole new world. It's so totally different the way you approach the things that yeah. you normally would do. Right. And I think like, what's so amazing about the mindset shift is it really, in order for it to be sustained, it becomes an identity shift, 
right? And so, so Mm -hmm. much of what I work with my clients on is who do you want to be in this Mm -hmm. marriage? Because we're taught in society that, you know, in marriage, you're supposed to meet each other's needs, right? And listen, I think you should be responsive, but you're not responsible. Mm -hmm. And so when you know the difference, what happens is you begin to identify what's true for me. Like, How do I want to treat my partner? How do I want to respond to these situations and scenarios in our marriage? And it becomes like you're not doing things out of people pleasing, but it's just who you are. And when you're doing anything that's from an alignment of what you really believe and what feels true for you, you're going to do it forever, which again, just like Mm. you said in your you're talking about your program and your work. It's like, I'm going to teach you how to lose weight the way you want to live it. Right. And so it's the same philosophy of, I'm going to teach you to uncover who you want to be as a partner. So you can just be that person and do those things because that's who you are. Not because you're trying to check off some wish list of your partner. Yeah. I love the whole concept of like, who do you want to be and how do you want to show up in the world? Because, and that can relate to marriage, weight loss, anything, work, whatever. Um, Because I think when you show up as the partner that you want to be or the leaner version of you, it's like a whole other level. It's not like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's not like you're showing up as like pretending to be the lean person or pretending to be the loving partner. (laughs) You know, it's like you embody it. It's like, and you may not even be there yet. Like you may not be at the weight you want to be, or you may not have the marriage that you want to be, but as you show up as a person you want to be, then that other person gets to decide how they want to relate to you. And it's fascinating because like you're saying, you're, you're, you're true to yourself. You're showing up as your authentic self rather than like people pleaser, which is a, a, um, you know, a facade, like you're basically lying to everybody as to who you are when you people please. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, totally. So, um, tell us about the important things to keep in mind when communicating. Yeah. So (laughs) listen, here's my philosophy on this. The words that come out of your mouth (laughs) and how they come out of your mouth is a function of what is going on in your brain and what you are feeling in your heart, right? So it's literally just like what you said that you can say the exact same words, but if you have a particular thought about how your partner's gonna respond, what they're gonna think of it, you're gonna say it in a certain way. If you're saying it out of frustration or resentment or disappointment, it's going to have a tone. (laughs) And so many people ask me, like, how do I get my husband to do this? How do I get my husband to understand X, Y, and Z? And I could give you the mechanics of exactly what to say, but it's not going to matter if you have the thought he never listens, he doesn't care, he is inconsiderate, or in your mind when you're having that one conversation on Tuesday, what's really happening is you're bringing a conversation that you had Tuesday two weeks ago, Tuesday two (laughs) years ago, right? And so, so much of the work of improving your communication is improving how you're thinking about the person you're talking to. Right. So it's a very different conversation when you're communicating with someone whom you believe wants you to be happy, wants the same things you want, wants, you know, things to work out, wants to find a reasonable solution where you both feel good about it versus having a conversation with someone you think is against you, who's trying to make your life miserable, who's being difficult and is just stubborn. Right. Yeah, How you have that conversation matters. And so before I teach you anything of how to approach conversations, and there are legitimate skills and legitimate strategies to increase understanding, decrease defensiveness and dismissiveness, but who you are being, again, back to that concept in terms of your thoughts and the 
energy you're bringing to the conversation matter so much. And so what I want to offer all of you is when you're thinking about having a conversation with your spouse, what you want to do is you want to think about how emotionally reactive are you? Because your emotions are always telling you what you're thinking. And obviously they're telling you what you're feeling. And so I like to just do this on a simple scale of one to 10. If you are at a five or above, meaning it's pretty intense emotion, <laughs> it's not the time to have the conversation, right? There's work you need to do on your thinking. There's work you need to do on your own feelings before that conversation is ever going to be productive and result in an outcome that actually works for you. Okay. So you want to have those conversations when you are at a five or below. Simple strategy, but again, it reminds you that communication, yes, it's the exchange between you and your spouse, but it's also you and what you're thinking and how you're feeling is, I would say like 70% of the conversation actually happening in the moment. Yeah. And I think too, um, you know, our brains like to pull up past evidence. Oh, when I brought that up to him last time, this is how I reacted. Or maybe you talked about it five times in a row and you got the same reaction and yeah. And it's, it's interesting. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's hard to change, but it's like, it, when you become aware of that, I think that's key. Like really yeah. as it comes in, um, when my kids were little and they'll to this day still say it, um, that one of the phrases that I always taught them was it's not what you say, it's how you say it. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I love that for them because, you know, as kids, they just blurt out whatever, or if they're mean or whatever. And it's like, or somebody says something to them, you know, it's like the tone that you tell them, it's really important. <laughs> and with the whole concept of like discussing, you know, when you're, when your emotions are high, your intellect is really low, really low, really low. So yeah. it's like, don't make any decisions because <laughs> that's when all the nastiness comes out, you know, and all the, the, passing around maybe the D word, you know, and like what maybe we should separate that kind of thing. And, yeah. um, yeah. Um, what else I wrote something down. Oh, um, you had said something about your clients ask you, how do I get him to do this? Which I thought was interesting because I know for my own, cause I'm married and my own mindset journey, it's like, I don't look at that anymore. Cause I used to be like, yeah. that. like, how yeah. can I get him to say or do or be on board with whatever? And I found it's, it's manipulative. And I know that word can be kind of harsh to some people, but, but you are, you're trying to manipulate the situation in your favor. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but I always love, like, just allow him to be him. Yeah. And then allow him to be him. him. And I think like sometimes the reason, right, we want to convince is because we think he's wrong and we think there's something wrong with him being wrong. So the way I kind of like work with my clients with wherever they are, because some of them are like open to just like full acceptance. Sometimes I will say like, just allow him to be wrong. What about that? Right? Like, because sometimes it is legitimately like against a value that you have or against something that's really important for you. Mm -hmm. And so trying to get you to see like, well, that's right too for him. Sometimes people just can't get themselves there. And so it's like, could you allow him to be wrong? Like, what would that be like? What would that feel like for you to just like notice something that you disagree with, that you have very different opinions on and allow it to be there? without needing to change it. Yeah. It's so liberating to get it, there sometimes. It is because it's like, yeah, I, I mean, my own personal journey, you know, mindset for me didn't come in really strongly to the last probably five years. So to see both sides, it's, it's fascinating for me because I'm like, wow, I really thought like that <laughs> back then or had, you know, had the interactions that I had. Um, so it's interesting to, to see the difference. Um, so for anybody who is out there, who's like, what is this mindset stuff? What, what is that? I highly recommend that you investigate into it, whether that's, you know, if you have a marriage issue, obviously go to Siobhan, 
your weight loss issues come to me, but like, there is this whole other side to understanding the way you think and yeah. how you interact in the world. Yeah. It's fascinating. It's so fascinating. And I think like for right now, for people to like, one of the ways I like to describe it is because I love events, right? I think about like being at a circular banquet table, like at a wedding, right? Mm-hmm. And there's like this beautiful centerpiece. And the centerpiece is like the issue, the thing, right? It might be the thing that you're upset about or that you're frustrated Mm -hmm. about. It's the focal point of your attention, right? And you're sitting at that beautiful table, right? Where you're sitting. The way I like to think about mindset and shifting your mindset is like, what if you sat at a different seat at that Mm -hmm. table, right? Like just one seat to the left, you'd see that centerpiece in a slightly different way. And then if you sat in another seat and I have this concept that I teach of 10 seats, take 10 seats, take 10 different perspectives on this thing that you're trying to solve or work through or understand. And if you keep like just stretching your mind to like, okay, well, how else could I see it? If I sat in a different seat, what else might I notice? What else might I think about? That's a really like tangible way to think about mindset. And I think that's what we're always doing as coaches is we're just opening another door or opening another seat for you to sit at. So you can look at things from a different perspective and then consciously choose what is the way of thinking that serves you and feeling better and taking the course of action. That's going to get you the results that you want. I love that. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm just envisioning, like if you, you kept moving around that table at some point, <laughs> you may have a couple seats that you like <laughs> and a couple, yes, you, may not you like. will, you totally yeah. will. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the third point is emotional management and how it impacts the dynamics of the marriage. I know we kind of touched on it a little bit, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah. Here's what I want everyone to know. This is like the secret to everything, right? <laughs> I'm listening. The reason <laughs> you want anything, right? The reason you want anything is because of how you will feel. That's it. Okay. In a marriage, you are always acting in ways that relate to how you are feeling. You are either avoiding emotions or you're like leaning in and indulging in emotion, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And so when it comes to creating a better experience, in terms of how you're feeling and how you're relating to each other, the way you relate to your emotions matters a lot. So many of us get into arguments or we shut down in a conversation or we create distance in a relationship because of how we're coping with and responding to a negative emotion. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling rejected or if you're feeling dismissed or if you're feeling uncared for in any way, when you don't know how to deal with that emotion, you react out of it, meaning you're gonna complain, you're gonna yell, you're gonna shut down, right? And so just being aware and just getting in the place of asking yourself, what am I feeling here? How am I responding to this emotion? Am I pushing my partner away because they feel unsafe? to me? Or am I like trying to pull them in because I'm in a need right now? Right. And so the better you are at just noticing and relating to your own emotions, the less reactive you're going to be. Right. Just like I'm sure, you know, there's many emotions that come along with the weight loss journey. And it's like, yep, you got to feel that you got to feel it and still stay on the course right? Still follow through with the things that you've committed to do. And so in marriage, what it takes to have a healthy, happy marriage is not really a mystery, right? Be nice to each other, spend time (laughs) together. Those are really (laughs) play nice in the sandbox, right? Right? Those are literally (laughs) the only two things, right? And accept each other. Anything that takes you away from that is because of an, an emotion, right? Like when you're angry, you don't want to be nice. Therefore you're not nice. Therefore your marriage gets worse. Like that's the equation of it. And so you want to always be looking at how am I feeling? How am I dealing with this emotion? And is the way I'm dealing with it helping me or hurting me, right? So you can still feel anger, 
but go to your partner, right? After you've gotten yourself a little bit grounded and just communicate like, hey, this doesn't work for me. I really felt angry because of this, right? That's a much better conversation than like flipping out and yelling and screaming and blaming them, right? But you'll only be able to do that when it's not a problem that you're feeling angry. There is a solution. And you both want a resolution to it. Yeah, I'm glad you went into that because I think a lot of people who aren't really into the mindset think they just need to like stuff those emotions down and not and resist them basically, which is the worst thing you can do because they will explode at some point. (laughs) Um, But yeah, and as far as like what you're talking about, you know, we all are looking for this feeling that we want. And it's the same thing with weight loss. That's why I was saying earlier about the scale and the number on the scale. It does not matter. I I always tell my clients, I'm like, say their dream weight is 120, but I'm like, if you are 130 and you're fitting into your clothes because your inches are smaller, would you really care that you're 130 instead of 120? It doesn't matter. Like that number is just a number, but, um, I am so glad you went into, um, that whole emotional part. Cause that's, that's key. So can you tell everyone, I know you have a little special offer for everyone. So do you mind sharing that with everybody? Yeah, absolutely. So what I have for you is a video series called the fresh start, right? Which is perfect for if you're in the middle and you want to create a fresh start and move your marriage in a better direction. So it is a, um, I teach you five skills of really creating a fresh start in your marriage. And you can get that right on my website. I know we'll link to it in the show notes, but it's drshavon.com forward slash fresh dash start. It's right there on the homepage. So you'll be able to see it. Awesome. So, and again, if anybody missed that, that will be in the show notes, you can go to shapeitupfitness.com and look for this episode and it will be there. Um, all right. So it's everybody's favorite time. Speed round. Linking Let's round go. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I always start off with a real easy one. Coffee or tea? Coffee. We can get along. Not that I don't like tea, but I definitely am a coffee drinker. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, let's see. What movie would you never get tired of watching over and over again? The Notebook. I have not seen that movie. I have to be honest. I haven't. I've seen I know. It no less than 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I think Love the it. movie that I've seen the most, which is my absolute favorite, is The Princess Bride. Ah, oh, and oh, I don't think I've seen you know. that all the way through. I've seen okay. pieces, but not in one sitting all the way through. <laughs> Hard time with, because I know the notebook, isn't it sad? Don't, don't. It's sad, but it, it ends <laughs> like just the way you would want it to end. Okay. Because I remember um, being little, my mom, we were very much big on like movies and musicals. And um, she showed me and it just popped out of my head. It's Audrey Hepburn. Um, oh, what is it called? Roman Holiday. I don't know if you've ever seen this. Have it. But little spoiler alert. It does not have, in my opinion, a happy ending. And I was I like, know. why would you show this to me? <laughs> I like movies with happy endings. <laughs> but so I will have to check out the notebook. Um, let's see. Did you have a favorite toy growing up? My Barbies anything related to Barbies. So the house, the car, the pool, I had the Barbie pool, like Barbie all the way. Yeah. I was a big Barbie. I know um, somebody else and I talked about Barbie too, but my dad had built this huge Barbie house for me. It was like on wheels. It was like two story Barbie scale house. It was, it was awesome. It was so cool. (laughs) But yeah, the Jeep, the horses. I don't think I had the pool. I didn't have the pool. The pool is the best. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Last question. Hmm. If you could have any skill instantaneously, what would it be? Probably seeing into the future. Ooh. I don't know. That one. I know. I said, as soon as I said it, it's like only positive things. (laughs) 
Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. And if there is one tip or one takeaway that you could give everybody, what would it be? I think the belief that I want to instill in everyone that I come across as it relates to marriage is you both want the same thing. You really are on the same team, wanting the same things. You might approach it from different angles. You might deal with your emotions differently, but at the end of the day, you both want to be happy and be together forever. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all your wisdom with everybody. And that is all for today. I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks again for having me. You're welcome. (laughs)